shocking leaks from hacker group expose Iranian regime's true weakness. Recently, Black, Black Reward, an Iranian hacktivist group, infiltrated the servers of several, several government offices and government-affiliated institutions. The group obtained documents, audio recordings, and videos showing the Iranian government's inability to suppress the ongoing protests. In an audio tape of a meeting between Qasem Qureshi, the deputy commander of the besieged paramilitary force under the Iran's <clears throat> Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, and media representatives, he spoke about worker strikes across Iran's 22 provinces, the fatigue of the Islamic Republic's security forces felt in dealing with the demonstrations, and how the regime is being defeated in the quote-unquote media war. They also discussed students in 62 universities across the country holding gatherings, with 11 others being the site of sit-ins during the, uh, uh, excuse me, being the site of sit-ins against the regime. Another document featured in a special bulletin created by military experts working for Hussein Salami, the commander-in-chief of the RGC, showing how the besieged paramilitary force was weakened significantly and could not mobilize to quell the protests. Finally, Black Reward also leaked an embarrassing video showing one of the news editors of the Farce News Agency masturbating to a video while smoking and eating potato chips. <laughs> Since the beginning of the protests in Iran in September, Black Reward has worked with other hack hacker groups, such as uh, Tepan Degan, to encourage Iranians to participate in rallies against the Islamic Republic. Yes, so I don't know. This hack, this hacker group, Black Rewards, has done three major hacks: one video, one audio, and one report, like a PDF file or whatever format it was. It right, a bulletin, as they call it. Right, the video was of um, a staff member of IRGC-related media group, which is actually, I think, an intelligence group but this guy is a media group the guy worked for first right yes um a video of him masturbating on the job like not like normal people who masturbate at home he was masturbating in his office um and they've released that video and also by the way the government came in and announced this person and they honored him for some reason right after this came out I don't wait know you what that. no 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 <laughs> Yeah. You have okay, Armin. I need you to, I need you to dive into that because that's news to me. <laughs> what? Oh yeah, they they called him. They gave him a reward and called him a John Boz, which is a designation mostly for people who go to war, like an honorary title for people who go to war, which was very offensive to a lot of war veterans. Is this like Iran. a Purple Heart? Like they gave this man like a Purple <laughs> Heart for <laughs> masturbating in the office? Yeah, yeah. See, guys. Qasem is also confirmed. He got the degree of John Boz, which means war wounded. Right? What was wounded? They... His gear <laughs> <laughs> out? No, but seriously, this is like an honorary title, kind of like a Purple Heart or whatever in the United States. Like, that's actually a fair comparison. And they honored him with that right after his masturbation video came out. But, you know, but uh, which is weird. Like, a lot of pe uh, people in Iran because the veterans in Iran are not t taken care of very well, right? So now a lot of them are like, this is such an insult to us as well. Like, what the hell? Why are you guys honoring this, you know, this sick man who, again, guys, nothing wrong with masturbating, but if you can't wait until you get home, there's something wrong with you, right? Anyways, they honored him. So, <laughs> so I love the that... detail that he was doing it while smoking and eating potato chips. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I like, think I'll, that just I think, speaks to me yeah. about how comfortable he was in that situation. He's like, I, I set up a whole atmosphere for myself. Troel is saying Jizbas Giz, instead of Jumbas. And uh, Mogambo is saying we all be Jumbas. No, it's okay. I don't oh know. Oh my God. But, anyways, so that was the first leak. I mean, not the first leak, that the video leak. The audio leak, as Susanna mentioned, a lot of revealing information came out. A lot of revealing information, especially from the audio leak. One of the most important, um, I mean, there's so many highlights, 
I don't know which one even to mention, but two of them that comes to my mind right now is how tired and uh, are the forces that are supposed to, what is it called? The anti-riot forces in Iran are, right? Both ideologically, like emotionally, they don't seem to be like they're, these are guys, these are things that we have been say, saying, protesters have been reporting from the streets in Iran, okay? But we had no proof for it. We were like, we have report after report after report, video after video, and these seems to be indicating this, right? These hacks are now giving us validations of that we were right. All the things that we have been saying, all the things that the protesters have been saying, now the government reports and audio leaks confirm that we were right. They are saying that their forces are tired, they're demotivated, they have lack of morale, they don't want to do their job, and they're not even being paid well, right? And they're like, can we, they, they mentioned how low their pay is and they're wondering if they could encourage them more. They're talking about giving them lunch. more. Like they're like, they are so lacking resources. Like, can we feed them? Maybe they, that would encourage them. Anyways, it's just like, it just shows that even the people who come, they're not coming because they are their hearts and mind is with the government. They just like this is just income for them. So if the government is able to mm. not able to pay them more, as because they right now they're having trouble paying them, right? But it, the, these are not people who are like that are their value system are is with the government and they're coming and like trying to defend the regime. Not right? as much as so, I'd like to think. I think as, there is yeah, still some of that in there. Some of that. I mean, I've seen a lot of videos of special forces going down the street screaming Yahoo Hussein. So obviously there is some ideological. That like, might be more of a there. rallying cry than an ideological cry. You know, it's these are like. Gross. I know it is very gross, but a lot of these young men, they're just like, you know, hooligans who just. Yahoo Hussein is just how they shout. How they sh uh, shout. You know what mm. I mean? Because mm. of the environment they're in. You know, I don't know. But mm. the, the, the it just doesn't seem like they can continue to. That's why you see half of Iranians have taken off their job. Like, actually, I will show you, like, in many places. I will show you some videos while, once you start talking. But let me give you some other. Yeah, I know. the video. Important... Is it the video you showed me the other day? Because that was incredible. No, this is a in, new in one. In the mall. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. This this is like in a mall as well, but it's similar to what I showed you before. But, Armin, right? one thing I really wanted you to talk about or would like you to talk about is because the information about this leak in the English media is not very comprehensive, and it leaves out a lot of what you have told me about it based on what you read in Persian language media. So, like, mm -hmm. the other things I've read about the leak is the extent to which the Qatari government was behaving and cooperating with the Iranian government to suppress people at the World Cup was exposed, like, on a massive scale. That was huge. Including, mm -hmm. like, the Iranian government successfully coerced the Qatari government from banning news agency Iran International from covering, new, creating news coverage of the World Cup. So they're very yeah, yeah, like no, if, like um, Iranian media who are not within Iran, so who might want to, uh, who would cover the protesters, because so the World Cup for Iranians was an opportunity for them Iranians to show up at the uh, uh, at the event and show their signs of anti-regime signs or Mahsa Amini signs or flags with the um, the lion and the sun instead of the Islamic Republic's Iranian flag, the actual the pre-Islamic re revolution flag of Iran, um, and now we know based on these uh, uh, report, uh, based on the audio leaks, that the Qatari government was completely in cooperation with the Islamic Republic to ban any use of protest material, and even mentions of Mahsa Amini was cracked down and attacked. And it, we saw we already saw videos of the Qatari officials coming in and removing all protest signs. Uh, but now we saw that the, the Qatari government was telling the Iranian regime that do not worry, we're going to help you crack down, that we have already found all the problematic people. Like, give us the, give us the name of anybody that is on, a, on your naughty list, and we will make sure that they don't arrive. We will, uh, we will cancel their visas. 
So for example, Iran International, which is a news agency outside of Iran that is very pro protesters, like very on the side of the anti-regime protesters, um, they already had visas and their um, journalist badge and everything approved and everything to come to, co to cover the World Cup. And they all got announced that like every single, like their visas were canceled, their um, entrance to the games, all of it was denied and blocked. Like even though after it was approved, they were like backtracked and they, at the request of the Iranian regime, the Qatari government just completely uh, suppressed any form of protest uh, by Iranians. Even like not protest, I'm not like protest. Yeah, not protest as in like they would come and like do anything that will disrupt the peace. Like just holding, just ha holding a sign that says Mahsa Amini was not allowed. Uh, a lady had Mahsa Amini writ written on her chest uh, with, with paint and the Qatari officials took her to her room and made her wipe it off before she could just the name Mahsa Amini was like was not allowed it work the name of a woman who died by the Iranian regime her name was not allowed in World Cup uh, enforced by the Qatari government uh, at at the request of the Iranian regime, which is unbelievable. But go on, you want to say something? Well, imagine if they had done that for something like George Floyd. I know, right? Um, imagine if the United States requested Qatar not to allow the name of George Floyd to be displayed anywhere in the state, any of the just his name, just his name. Unbelievable. But yes. the leaks also revealed that the the Qatar government actually gave the Iranian government over a list of Iranian ticket holders. Yes. Yeah. Like it goes so deep, it's so insidious. But by um, the way, some people for people who are doubting these leaks, okay, the Iranian regime has not denied it. In fact, they took they are justifying it. So not like they're not saying this they never came out and said that these leak this is a fake leak wow which is confirms that this is a you know that this is a legit leak which is insane because i i have heard so i follow some different kinds of analysts for these for run related issues and one a uh, analyst site that I really, really like said that we cannot verify this document and is treating it with great skepticism. We offer no assessment of its authenticity apart from noting that the style and word choice of portions of the document seem unusual for native Persian speakers. So they have some questions about the authenticity of the leak based on that criticism of the word choice and some things that would be unusual for native Persian speakers. What do you think about that? First of all, the audio leak was completely legit because we know the people that were speaking. Okay. So these are like high officials in the Iranian regime and this was their audio. Okay. And they came out even saying like justifying some of the things that they said. Right. And the, I read their report, the Persian report that the bulletin one, that is completely, I don't understand who's saying that that is. That is like a very formal way of writing. I don't know. I don't know what they're talking about. So who's saying that? I mean, the government itself has not rejected this. Mm. They they usually bend over backwards like to reject something like this if they don't if they don't um, if it's not full. like they are complete. Okay, so here's the the actual skepticism. Okay, because there are conspiracies here that people are offering. Not that these that not that this report is fake, but that the leak is fake. As in the people who the, the people who are responsible for the leakage of this data wanted it to be leaked. As in there are certain people within the regime taking positions against other people within the regime. That is the conspiracy oh that is being made here. Not the fact that this is not um, actually data that the government is working with i mean it wouldn't be entirely far off though that's within right. the character and nature of the regime and many things we've seen before right so yes. in terms of like crazy conspiracies like that's not so outlandish i don't know what do you think about it though no no it's complete like we have been seeing this for a long time right now especially after the protest i mean 
how many okay here's actually how many has openly complained about why hardliners are not saying anything against the protests mm. not the reformists okay the hardliners like he's saying, where are you guys? Why are you Khamenei? He's supposed to be the supreme leader, which you're supposed to when he says something, his command is the word of God. He now is out in the open and like, why are you guys not officially making statements against the protests? And here's the thing, Susanna, even after complaining about it, a lot of the highest hardliners officials have still not come out and said anything against the protests. That is, that shows. Is such a high degree of you know division division not between the reformers and hardliners but between the hardliners themselves like unseen and unimaginable wow wow so we're saying that and also this report was talking about that as well this report was saying Khamenei is complaining about this Khamenei also was saying certain people it, it, the report also shows how much harmony is directly involved again so that's what little... i wanted to talk about because this is not reflected in the english media but you were emphasizing to me how much it reveals that he's micromanaging things so can right, you please right. like communicate what you know because i haven't been able to find this and what i've been researching about it yeah so but by the way i i like how susanna was being skeptical about it i don't want to act like anything is certain here okay so some level of skepticism is always always required okay for at least one of these three uh, leaks okay because two of them at least are video and audio so there's nothing for you to be skeptical about they're literally there and there are people have been identified as the people who've been saying that the one that you could be skeptical about is the written report okay whether or not that was an actual report or not okay but no, the reason why i'm skeptical that this is fake is because in reaction to this leak what farce agency did do you know what did they said what their response was their response was like we do have such reports we do make these reports that was their official response that these kind of reports do exist. So why would they like, I don't understand why. Yeah, would they what is say that, that supposed to mean? That, that we do like part of our job. So basically, basically this report was a report from the farce agency, which is supposed to be a news agency, but this report, if it's real shows that farce news agency is actually an intelligence operations with the cover of being a news agency. Okay. I mean, because that's not entirely that, surprising. <laughs> yeah, that's what, I guess what people suspected for a while. But what that, what that report is, is a report of certain, a summary of different important notes to an IRGC, to a high official, a high member yeah. of IRGC member, okay, like a lead, the leading figure in IRGC, right? So why would a news agency make an intelligence report to... Um, the, one of the main armed forces in the country, like you're a news agency. This is an intelligence report. So you're actually an intelligence operation, right? And a lot so, of the report had to do with collecting information about like outside sources, independent media, what they're reporting about what the regime knows, what they're reporting about what intelligence, US intelligence services know, et cetera, et cetera. So they're also doing a lot of like information collecting. Right, right. So, um, so let me actually, so let me make sure two two more things about the leak information, and then we can move on. Right, one from the audio leaking uh, audio that was hacked, and one from the report. Let me do the report first. Okay, one of the most interesting numbers I saw in this report, and again, this is not us saying this. This is the part of the Iranian government telling this to another part of the Iranian gov government. The number, the level, okay, so there was a question. This is it, government's own poll, their own questionnaire. This is how people answered it, okay? The question was, how do you view the protests, okay? Do you see them as, like, helpful or not helpful or constructive? Or do, what, what percentage of the people responded do you think found the protests as something that is helping, something that will make the country better? Well, I think I saw the results of these polls, so I think I know uh, the answer. Damn. 
It was 84%. Oh, I was going to say 70%. Damn. <laughs> A 84% according to the Islamic Republic's own poll found the current protests in Iran to be something, not, not necessarily that they want the regime to topple or something like that, but they are on the side of the protests. They think the protests will make Iran a better place. That is a damning number. If this report, if this leak is actually a true leak, that is what how people are responding to a government poll. I don't know what Holy they would respond shit. to. <laughs> Contrast to the government polls in Russia. Right. For so, comparison. Right. Oh my god. So there, there's that. Another thing, and last thing I want to highlight, unless I remember anything else, about the audio leak is that when you listen to the audio, there was a part of it that was very interesting to me that they were saying that the way that they they're being instructed to talk about the protests. So they were talking about the propaganda, the way they there was a lot of discussion around the propaganda and how they do propaganda. So this information is very revealing to us because it shows how people in the regime are having a conversations behind the scenes about what narratives to put out there. Okay. So for example, this is not what I want to highlight, but I just want to give you an example, is that they have orders to talk about um the previous protests, like the former protests, like they're like, you have to talk about it as if it's done. Like it's something that was done in the past and that we have moved on, right? So they're saying every line that we talk about the protest has to be something that has passed. That's how you're supposed to talk about it, right? So to give the impression to the Iranian public that, okay, we had protests, it's over, now we're moving on, right? Um, so this is like, but the, the interesting thing that I want to highlight is when they were discussing the propaganda around the, the way they talk about the protests, they were like, we have to, the, the upper ups are insisting that we constantly say that these protests are um, American and Israeli, okay? So they're foreign influence. And then somebody said, don't forget Saudi. We have to say Saudi because our our intelligence shows that people don't are not bothered that much by American or Israeli, oh but they're God. bothered by it being Saudi. Okay, they, they just say that they say like people are not that much bothered if you say Israeli or American. You have to say that this is Saudi-backed protest. <laughs> Wait, can you like explain the significance of that a little bit for people who don't just know? Well, I can think of because I had a strong that... reaction. <laughs> well, I, I will tell you what my reactions are, to it, and then you tell me what you think about it. One is the fact that they also the regime is also admitting that Iranians are not very hostile towards America or Israel. That's a very huge like the the, the Islamic Republic um, staff are admitting to themselves that calling something Israeli, people are like, they don't see Israel as evil, like the, the regime sees itself, see, sees Israel. Like they're like, no, don't have an allergic reaction to something being Israeli. And they're admitting that, right? That's my first impression. Second of all, the fact that it doesn't really matter to them what the truth is. The narrative that they're coming up with is based on what people what reaction they could get out of people like they have to say that this is foreign influence or saudi backed because they want people not to support it right which is similar very similar to what chinese government is now saying about the protest that is happening in china another similarity by the way between the china uh, china ccp's narrative of the protest in china and iran's narrative is that their reaction to it is very similar as well right because a, lo I, a lot of times when you have protests in Iran and the regime in Iran says, oh, this is foreign backed, foreign backed, this is like outside influence, a lot of Iranian protesters say like foreign influence, like Islam, you know, like you mean like, no, oh, this is like, oh, these protesters are supported by foreign ideology. And Iranians, a lot of Iranians are like, well, I mean, your entire system is Islamic, which is a foreign a foreign ideology to Iran, right? I'm dead. And <laughs> so, so, but Suze, I heard 
something recently from the Chinese protesters. Okay, mm -hmm. the Chinese protesters were accused of being foreign influence, and the Chinese protesters they said like, "Oh, you mean like Marx? You mean like Lenin?" <laughs> so I was like, "Oh my God, this is communism so is technically a Western ideology." Yeah, technically. It's a it's a German yeah. and Russian, you know, ideology. So I was like, I do. So, oh my <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, oh my God, this is such deja vu. But anyways. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so what really shocked me was when you were telling me about this was like the extent to which Khamenei is actually has his hand so deeply in the situation, the extent of the micromanaging, because from afar like i mean he spent what almost two weeks two and a half weeks not saying anything when the uprising first started and then now he started to make more public appearances con more consistently um but yeah it, but there seems he kind of gives this air of being like aloof and above it all right but then this leak showed how much he actually has his hands like in every aspect yeah, he, he he the Abdul Hamid guy, the Friday the Friday pre leading Friday Imam of Zayedan, Khamenei, for example, saying this guy, do not arrest him, but destroy his reputation. Like he had in the specific individuals in mind, and he was giving specific instructions on how each one of these, like not like because he makes it seem like oh I just give like a general guideline and some people like my interpretation was like exactly. he just says something like a quranic verse like he, gets, he says something and different people like take his words and come up with different interpretations of it and that's uh, people follow his commands based on their interpretations and he just just a general guideline but now we know that no he's like this person needs to be treated like this this person needs to be treated like that he's hands on Khamenei is hands on and he is also specific like he has the report says that like, Khamenei has specific complaints about specific individuals. He has complaints for IRGC. Khamenei is not happy with IRGCs. So, and Khamenei is also not happy with Raisi. He had complaints about Raisi's. There's so much division. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, the report, the leak reports go so much in line with his recent speech. Okay, because the report shows that the besiege, the besiege, the, the morality police, the um, the plain clothes, plain, plain clothes, yeah, part of the military, that the religious part, the very religious part of the, you know, um, anti riot force, um, that they're demoralized, that they don't know. A lot of them are skeptical. Some of them don't know if they're doing the right thing, right? And Khamenei's speech was so obviously trying to tell encourage tell them that they're on the right side that they're doing the right thing that they shouldn't let other people like why would Khamenei give in his speech address to besiege tell them not not uh, not to let others make them doubt their position because they're doubting their position like he wouldn't he, he wouldn't say those things unless that's that was a problem right now he used yeah. a verse from the quran that all the exegesis and tasfir speaks on how this oh verse is always used to reinvigorate soldiers and troops when they're losing when they're facing yes. defeat <laughs> so how it shows how weak this? they are when yeah. Yeah. how do i know this i do my research baby <laughs> <laughs> good job Susie. like wow. historically they only cite this part of the quran when you're getting your ass kicked and you need to be like no we got this okay allah has our back okay <laughs> okay okay <laughs> As you're you're really good at this. I'm, I'm impressed. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. I have um some other stuff I wanted to show. So in the show notes, I collected some uh things that I'd like to show. One of them has to I think the first two have to do with um Zahadan. Yeah, exactly. And do then you, um Do you mind bringing is... those up yourself? Because I want to show something in Tehran. Okay, yeah, no problem. Yeah. Um, give me a second. Let me make this nice and big. Oh, come on. Don't do this to me. Okay. Where is I it? I want to show you something. I showed this with Harris Sultan on the secular jihadists. I want to mm -hmm. show it here as well. 
Oh yeah. Okay. So while you do that, I'll show people this. So you just, um, so this oh, is pretty you... significant. Um, one thing that the, uh, protests revealed to us, the, the leaks, excuse me. So the, the, these leaks that we were talking about revealed how Khamenei has his hands in everything and specifically how he wants to take out in the media war, uh, Mwalvi uh, Abdul Hamid, who is the most prominent Sunni leader in all of Iran and also a very vocal advocate for the discriminated against Baluchi people. And so in response to this, there were huge protests in Zahedan, which is the capital city of Sistan and Baluchistan province. And um, some of these videos and signs are so amazing like let me do you have audio no 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 audio no. okay um, oh you, you don't have audio that's why because you don't have audio what are you talking about i do have audio but the, the speaker was had to cross it yeah anyways. oh so uh, some of these signs are really awesome like because it shows oh. how historically the regime uses fear-mongering about separatists in Baluchistan and also Kurdistan, you know, on opposite sides of the country to try to separate people and also demonize and justify a lot of racism against these ethnic minorities. And um, some of these placards are awesome. They read things like, if Kurds and Baluchis were separatists, they would fight with Iran, not for Iran. Right. I, I just, like, seeing... I don't know. People be so explicit oh. in their messaging. Go back. Go back to the other picture. This one. No, no, not that one. Cordoba Luz has the type of them. Yes, you're right. They're saying like they're not separatists. You're right. The one be behind, not the the one behind, mm -hmm. is that saying that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so also, also, this is very significant because women are showing up in the protest and in system by the they're famous for women not joining in the protest because they're like more paid. The patriarchy is a lot more pronounced in system by the and other provinces. Uh, so a lot of people are like, oh, system by the is fighting for women's right. System by the has a is more anti-woman than the rest of Iran. And who are they to speak about women's rights, right? They don't even have women showing up in their protests. They have their women locked up in their home. So who are they to even join the protest, right? So now we're saying waves of women. This is uh, this is kind of new. I mean, I know, like, not completely new, but very significant that now it's, it's still about very significant. Our... And they're showing up in much larger numbers. Yeah, it, it is a much more conservative area. And the flavor yes. of it is different because it's predominantly Sunni. But here, um, yeah. So wait. here, here in Sistan Baluchistan, you're not going to see women taking off their hijab. Like that's you know the fact that they're even outside is very unique for Sistan Baluchistan. So this is not like the Tehran part of Iran. This is this is as liberal as you could get. The fact that they're allowed to leave their homes, um, I mean, is is crazy for for. There was one where. They, like, um, like, see, see, in, in Sistan Baluchistan, women even have their hijab has the burqa. Like, this is the one of the few places in Iran when women cover their faces. Like, even in places where women have hijab in Iran, they don't cover their faces. Yeah. Yeah, but go on. There, um, look at how big the crowds were. So this yeah. was the protest in response to the knowledge about this defamation of Abdul Hamid coming out. And so huge signs, huge show of support, basically saying like Abu Muhammad like is our red line. Like you touch him, we're going after you. And right. yes, there was just a huge show of support. And there was this amazing video. Yeah, look at these women yeah. with the Zan Zendegi Azadi signs. Yeah, this is not like Zan protesting for women's rights well women who wear clothes like this usually don't prote don't protest for women's rights so this is like unique there was another one this is incredible there are all these women and what they're chanting is whether with or without hijab we are going towards revolution yes so women conservative women who want to wear the hijab are chanting in favor of women in iran who don't want to wear the hijab so these are extremely, can you play this extremely conservative women these are these are the this is the most conservative part of iran that you could get i will show you videos of like 
very liberal part of Iran right after this. But can you play this audio? I want to make sure that this, what they're saying. Let me know if you have the audio. No idea. Okay, it's fine. Send it to me later. But that's pretty crazy. Um, can I show you something now? Because mm -hmm. that's like, this is one of, what Susanna showed you was one of the most conservative parts of Iran. This is one of the most liberal parts of Iran, okay? And well, not like, there are many places like this, like the main, the main cities, okay? Like Tehran, Shiraz, Esfahan, right? Um, this is how, this is now, this is a very recent video. This is the 1st of December. This is like uh, three days ago. This is three days ago in Tehran, Iran. Look how people are hanging out. So in Iran, it's still, the hijab is mandatory. It's still illegal for you to walk in, in, in Iran without a hijab. But in the major cities, at least half of the women are just not wearing the hijab, even though it's illegal. Look at this. This is not in the middle. This, what I'm showing you is day-to-day -day life. This is not in the middle of protests where people take off their hijab as a sign of protest. This is just normal day-to-day -day life in Iran. This is Tehran. Hold on. Look at this. Can you believe this is Iran? Look at this. blew my mind. I don't, I mean, I'm Iranian. I can't believe this. This is how people are just chilling in Iran without hijab. Like some people are wearing their hijab. Oh, wait, I need to. When you showed this to me a few days ago, what I said was the proportion of women I see wearing hijab in this video is the same as the proportion of women I see wearing hijab like around Europe. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, somebody's saying that's the mob. No shit. Of course that's the mob. This is you can't this is public. You can't wear the you can't wear you can't be in the mall without a hijab. That's illegal in Iran. And just half of the women are just not wearing a hijab. Much more than half. Most. Most okay, but this is look at this. This is outside. This is in public. She's wearing a t-shirt. This is wearing a t-shirt. This is like the Iranian version of just walking out like naked. Like I cannot, I don't understand how to explain this to you guys. Wearing a t-shirt, a woman just coming out into the mall wearing a t-shirt is crazy to me at least because I haven't been in Iran for more than a decade. Yeah. Gurdjian is saying fantastic. Wait, did I see somebody? Charles is saying this looks like flipping Stockholm or Copenhagen. <laughs> I'm looking for women who are wearing their hijab. These are matching. In this right. video, oh, it's like here, hijab. Hijab. maximum 20%. And that's being very generous. Okay, but this is like a mall. So you have to be upper, like probably more people who go inside a mall are upper class, right? Oh, especially so I don't know. nowadays. I think, yeah, I think in the street is 50 in Tehran. In the streets are 50-50. Look, hijab, no hijab, no hijab. Look and like no one is saying anything. Nobody is like, they're acting like it's normal. Like people are just chilling. Like nobody is like shocked. Like, oh my God. She hasn't have her job. Like people are just. They, yes, you're right. Actually, that's what I gets me. The, the how casual and how not a not a big deal it is. About it. Oh, this is Burger Factory. Burger Factory. A <laughs> job, a job, no a job, no a job. Anyways, that's just that's just it's mind blowing. It's mind I mean, this is remember like. A few months ago, we were having a show, and I was like, I, the, the, no, "This is this can't be undone. They can't put this back in the box." I'm like, "No, but they have, you have like they have reports that they're gonna like, oh, we're gonna make, we're gonna enforce their job now." And I'm like, "They can't. There's just too many. Do you know how impossible it is to enforce their job now? They literally need like a like a, a, a armed force at every corner. Like they need like a, a, an art. Like there's no army." that uh, in Iran to be able to put the hijab back on women's head right now, even if it is the law. Um, there was a few more things I wanted to show. This is some more footage from uh, Zahedan. Just like massive, massive crowds. And again, look at all these women like coming out to protest with, you know, like pro woman fist raised signs. Like it's, it's so cool. It's crazy. Like seeing 
this kind of solidarity across like conservative liberal ethnic groups it just really it makes me emotional like i just i just love to see it the i think selva I wanted... selva is summarizing this for americans very well so this is like <laughs> basically this is the redneck version of iran yeah this is this this would be the redneck version of where uh, of iran and they are supporting the cause right so the most conservative part of iran is supporting what a lot of people associate with a liberal movement that's why this is significant but yeah mm -hmm. go ahead. um this is also really funny so one thing we didn't talk about <laughs> is you talked about this on the q a that you did this week with secular rarity <laughs> but the responses <laughs> to the um to the loss of uh, Iran losing to America in the football game. Should we talk about that just a little bit? Because we didn't discuss that at all, and that did happen this week. That was significant. Yeah, I mean, I you guys should go. Where did we discuss this? Oh, yeah, we discussed this on the Q&A. You guys should go watch that. But we just, we just showed clips of Iranians celebrating uh, their loss in World Cup to U.S. So we had picked videos of Iranians in Iran, in Iran, just waving around the American flag, uh, celebrating with fireworks and dances everywhere in Iran. It looked were... like the Fourth of July American Independence Day in in San Andaj, like. Cele celebrating the Iranian team's loss to United States. Iranian people, Iranian people who their main religion is soccer. The main religion, like I grew up around fanatics of Iranians who wanted nothing else more than seeing the Iranian team win. Like they, they, their entire lives were defined by it. And this year when they were so against the regime, then they saw the Iranian team as the, the regime's team that they were celebrating the other side, even though the other side was United States. Can you do you understand how significant it is? This is the first time in history where a country, the people of a country, come out in mass celebration, celebrating the loss of their team of their country, and that's significant by itself. And also, Iranians in Iranian streets waving around American flags, congratulating United States team to in defeating the Iranian team. I wish I had videos of the American flags waving. I had right now. some Iranian friends message me like, congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> like, yes. No, congratulations to all of us, brothers and sisters. <laughs> <laughs> but this meme made me laugh. It was like oh. agents of the Islamic Republic after USA's World Cup victory over their national team. And it's a yeah. professor on a whiteboard saying, we are effed. <laughs> And then, By the way, Selva wait. just got f memberships for five people. Um, oh wow! Thank you so people much. People are Selva. saying That's thank amazing. you, Selva, and yeah, yeah, you rock. Thanks. Oh, look at this. Oh, Thanks, bro. God. People, people just got so many memberships. Look at that. And oh, so uh, is thank you. Thank, thank you, you Selva, Thank you for, for supporting our work and also yeah. giving the gift of emojis and memberships to everyone else. Um, wait. I just wanted to yes look at these parties yeah guys these are these are celebrations in iran because the iranian team lost this is my favorite do you have any examples of the american flag wait Sorry, what did you say? I was too sucked into the Kurdish music. <laughs> Do you have any examples of the American flag being waved in the in Iran as a celebration? Let me see. Hold on, maybe I can find. I can search for it. Yo, the fireworks going off and everything. It's so great. Oh, here. I had a couple of examples here. This Look at even in Zahadan. <laughs> it's so lit oh my god here let me show here my screen look at this so what i am showing you right now is people celebrating the iranian team loss 
And this is an American flag you're watching in Iran and people celebrating a United States win over Iran. In Iran, look at this. People are cheering and they're saying they have to dictate and there's a guy like, look at this, with American flag. And when people see it, they cheer. When the people see the American flag in Iran, they cheer. It's crazy. This is crazy. Also, like there's more American flag waving here. Here. Look at that. People, when they, other people, when they see that she has the American flag out, the people are saying like, congratulations, like they're like cheering her, for, <laughs> thanking her for having the American flag out. Oh my God. Guys, you do, I don't know if people understand how historic this is. Like how much louder can America, can Iranians show to the world how angry are with their government and with their, with, with but, other than like celebrating the loss of their team like people yeah. were like this is upside down world yeah so, I don't know. well especially like when you've been indo indoctrinated like since birth that this is yeah. your enemy and the destruction of your nation and like the family unit yeah. <laughs> it's pretty significant um there that is are there any other this, um oh go for, go let for me it. read the super chat uh how do you pronounce christian i think name? he likes christian. us to say gj 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 is saying my housekeeping lady's daughter is now in Qatar with her dad who flew over from iran she dressed in all orange and flying dutch red white and blue flag okay cool. <laughs> nice. thank you thank you for your support yes um, thank you for the super chat for the six euros yeah go, go on what are um saying? well okay there are a couple of big breaking like huge breaking stories that just happened so the extent to which iran is cooperating with russia to crack down on the protests has like just been revealed there's also been a you know supposedly the attorney general has announced that they're going to disband the morality police and there is supposedly going to be a review of the mandatory hijab law. However, this literally came out a few hours ago. So we're still waiting for more information and we're definitely going to dive into it more next week. Um, I do think it's still really important to emphasize how much this crackdown is still as bloody as it as it ever has been because now we have reports of at least again at least 448 people being killed since mid-september and now there are even three children who are facing death penalty charges who have been charged with crimes that carry the death penalty as punishment children children so obviously this is like very severe and very significant um one other thing that i wanted to bring up and i wish that i had a freaking image prepared give me a second um was the case of arash sadegi i can't pronounce his name right armin what's the right way that you pronounce it you know the gay the k fucking kills me okay oh which yeah. what place no not a place Wait. arash sadegi Oh, Sadaki. Arash Sadaki. Yeah. So, wait, give me a second. I want to pull up an image of him. Um, because, so for those who don't know, Arash Sadaki is a really, really significant and historic um, protest figure in Iran. And, wait, here we go. This is perfect. Oh, you want to share your screen? Yeah, if my computer would freaking behave. Should I share your screen? I can click on it. Yeah, no one second. It's just not showing the right post. Fuck. Okay, let's just do it like this. So, whoops. Here are some pictures of Arash. And he is a very historic civil rights activist, human rights activist in Iran, who's basically spent the last... I don't know, 12 plus years in and out of jail ever since 2009. And I mean, his story is so, there's so much to get into. 
And this, what the regime has put him through and his family, like the level of tragedy and cruelty that he has been subjected to by this government is something that even like a Greek playwright of tragedies could not come up with because it's so messed up like just the levels and it's like too much to get into now but just like the amount of suffering is so severe but arash is he is very significant for many reasons he's fought for prisoner rights and just many general civil rights and he un has undergone um hunger strikes that severely damaged his body and at the beginning of the uprising he was re-arrested by the government and even though he has bone cancer. And so he is being denied treatment by authorities for his bone cancer and the other medical needs that he has, that he has a, as a result of this, his ill treatment by authorities over the past over 10 years. And the United Nations has come forth and condemned the treatment of Arash and so I just wanted to, you know, mention his story because I think it's really important to get more attention on it and to get more pressure on the regime to release Arash, let him receive medical treatment, because we saw how severe the situation was with Hussein Ronagi, another very significant human rights activist in Iran, who the regime was basically actively killing via torture. And it was through pressure internationally, pressure on social media, that just last week, or week and a half ago, he was finally released on bail and was finally able to receive treatment for, one, going on hunger strike for over two months, and two, the torture that he was experiencing by the regime over the past eight weeks. So I really want to raise awareness about what's happening to Arash and make sure to go, um, you know, tweet about it, post about it, use the hashtag with his name and get more pressure again on the government to let him go receive medical care and see his family so i think that's really really important all right we should move on to the next thing but uh one, okay hicks boson is asking a question when i need to answer i'm hearing that morality police is um abolish it's breaking news well hold your horses um it's not abolish they're talking about whether or not they should start talking about abolishing it okay and 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 even if they ever move forward with that they probably just i mean okay are we talking officially or effectively because effectively um it's kind of abolished right now in many places as in as i showed you in some of these videos there are reports right? that it hasn't they haven't been seen in tehran for like a few weeks now yes um, also, just remember when it's some the Iranian regime when they abolish something, they could just bring it back tomorrow and like, oh, we're putting it back at any moment. Like they could just abolish it when the protests uh, when when they feel pressure and they just could bring it back anytime they want, right? The, the point is that the Iranian people are not the the protesters are not fools. Then they know that something that it can so easily be taken away can so easily be brought back. So this is not something that is going to make them satisfy them right uh the protesters don't want the morality police to be abolished that's not what they're asking for the protesters are not asking for mandatory hijab to be removed that's not what they're asking for what the main chance are what the protests are about are the toppling of the regime they know any kind of these any like they were expecting a lot of um, small gestures by the government like this to happen. And they already been preparing for it because they know the government is weak, so it's gonna give in to certain things like that. They have been way before the government makes moves like this, they have come out and said, just remember not to give in if, they just, if they're just throwing crumbs at you, that this is not what we're out here for. We're out here for the fall of the regime right just so just so that you know how people how much people expect for the government to uh, give in because they don't seem to be able to crush the protests um it's been a couple of weeks i think even a month now that in iran they are making movies 
with two scenes. They're taking every shot, they're doing every shot, they're taking two different shots, the mov movie makers. One with hijab, one woman without hijab. Because movie makers in Iran are expecting the mandatory hijab laws to be removed. So oh, they just wow. so they're making a non-hijabi versions of the movies just in case the hijab is not mandatory. So when at the release date, they could actually release a not hijab version. That's oh, how God. that's how much people are expecting the hijab laws to be removed, that they're making two scene, two versions of every movie. Wow. <laughs> yeah. But Great Jedi makes a very good point where he says, I doubt it will be abolished, but probably rebranded. And yeah, yes. I, was talking, I was talking to Babak about before about this before the show. And he's like, Yeah, this has been rebranded so many times before. And he listed off at least like five different names of different things it's been called over the years. Yeah, the, the smartest thing they could do to make themselves look good. If they, but it's not going to work, is for them to rebrand it and then go after corruption, right? Because instead of going after women without hijab or people going out with dates, right? To go after, use the same forces to go after some rich, corrupt people, okay? Because that throwing out some meat to the lions, we're like, oh, look, we're taking you seriously. Instead of arresting women, we're arresting people who are responsible for poverty, the corruption. This is what this is what this is what you want us to use these forces for, right? That would be the smart thing to do uh, to make everyone happy, but that's not going to make them happy. Like that's not going to be enough. They be, yeah. people are that out there for blood. Yeah, I think oh, that. Oh, 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 my friend, that is an understatement. Um, yes. <laughs> oh my god, the rhetoric. Um. Yeah, but this is breaking news. We're going to dive into this a lot more next week because this literally just came out like right before the show. Um, and, oh, there was something I was going to say, but I forgot. Well, Selva Kumar is also saying Armin ignored my membership milestone. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait, hold on. Let me actually bring two membership milestones that I... It's because I, I, none of them, they don't appear in our stream yard. They don't. Only yeah, I have to look at my phone. Selva... Uh, yeah, I'm so sorry. Let me just no, <laughs> don't apologize. Okay. I mean, Selva had a two year total <gasps> membership. Oh! Wow, also, uh, GJ also had a two month membership milestone, and he said hi from Holland. Sorry for being late again. Okay, so two membership milestones one for Selva and one from GJ. Thank you guys. Sorry, oh my I missed goodness. It. Oh. Well, thank yes. you guys oh. so much for being such a great part of the Atheist Republic community. It's amazing. <laughs> Really quickly, Shriyash has a question. He's saying, what's a good source to learn Farsi? I think Iran will come with some interesting cinema. Honestly, they already do. Pre-revolution Iranian cinema. Um, I'm a nerd. You, what's wrong with subtitles? Why would you waste your time learning Farsi? There's subtitles. Oh my god, I'm obsessed with Farsi. It's a beautiful language. No, not you. You, yes, you make sense. Okay, You're part of Iranian activism. You're there, you're dating an Iranian, so you should learn Farsi. But why would Shreyash, Shreyash don't waste your time learning Farsi? Okay, yeah. if you do want to learn Farsi, I suggest there's a YouTube channel that I watch, and I think it's called Learn Persian with Majid. Like, Google that, mm. and you'll probably find it. I find it, it's um, it's it's really useful because he uses a lot of cultural context and references, which teaches you a deeper knowledge about how these things are actually used versus just what you say. Yeah. So um, I highly suggest that. Asian Americans saying subs because subs are dumb. Okay. Um, and subtitles. also, so don't put that on subs. Subtitles. Yeah, don't put <laughs> subtitles. Yes. No. Don't disrespect subs. <laughs> Susanna. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I got defensive. <laughs> De defending your people? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> good, 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 good. Anyway. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's cute. Um, something I don't remember is celebrating her six month membership, saying, Why no new emojis? Oh, yeah. Do we need to add new, new emojis? I'll have to check what our membership number is. Because yes, we okay. get throttled, like, we, we, 
YouTube will max out the amount of emojis we can have based on how many members we have. So mm. right now I GJ think we're at the max, but I'll check. Okay, okay. GJ saying, can can you say anything about uh, about numbers of RAPE victims? We don't have numbers for that. We just know it's no. happening, but we don't have the numbers. You mean like what the regime is doing systematically? No, we don't have numbers. Yeah, we don't have numbers for that. No. Yeah. Uh, Engaged in American is correcting himself, he's saying, "Okay, LOL. Subs, DOMs, and switches are all valuable. Thank you." <laughs> 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 valuable and valid <laughs> you can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free too sexy to show most of it here on youtube we draw muhammad hindu goddesses sexy hijabi art jesus mother mary japanese god greek gods and much much more click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art